as a schoolboy indeed, I became interested in the Maori people and began to make some inquiries of my own about them, read about them. I learned a certain amount of Maori. And <clears throat> I think uh, I really thought that anthropology in those days was purely a, an amateur and, and hobby affair. And in fact, I was interested in economics. <coughs> did my first piece of field work before I'd ever heard of Magnoski uh, in uh, a rural uh, occupation in New Zealand. And in fact, uh, thought for quite a while when I came over to this country that I might still pursue the uh, economic career. And then decided in the end uh, that uh, throw my cap over the window and uh, become an anthropologist. Did you do that? Had you already gone to the LSE when you decided to become an anthropologist? Yes, for about six months. <coughs> I was really sitting on the fence, as it were, between economics and anthropology. Uh, I'd become interested when I was doing economics in New Zealand with the vague possibility of somehow relating that to my study of the Maori. And the Murray economics notion grew out of that. And I then discovered, to my delight, Malinowski's Argonauts in a bookshop. And he was somebody who'd done the kind of thing with a level of sophistication that I had no idea of at that time. You then went to the MSC and you studied anthropology there. Who were your teachers at the MSC? Oh, Malinowski. Just Malinowski. Were there others? Uh, Seligman was there. Uh, indeed, I lectured for Seligman in part on archaeological matters, which uh, I somehow managed to accumulate. Uh, but it was really Malinowski, uh, the prime mover, so to speak. I attended, I attended Hobhouse's seminar, for example. Uh, Talker Parsons uh, was there at the time, and he, in a sense, conversely, attended Malinowski's seminar, who was a very considerable amount of, of moving to and fro, Vestermark and so on. But my real teacher was Malinowski. 